Welcome to today's video, Building an Interactive Chatbot, Part 1, Using Q&A Maker. How would you like to publish your frequently asked questions to a chatbot, allowing interactive conversations for your users in SharePoint or other channels? It only takes a few minutes to get started. Okay, so here's the promise. You're going to be able to take your FAQ content, be it in structured form in documents or online FAQs that you can access via URL. You're going to load those into Q&A Maker. It's going to do some indexing and ranking, extract the content, and that's going to be turned into a Microsoft bot, which you could ultimately then surface in a variety of chat channels. Okay, so here we are. Here is Q&A Maker. The actual URL is qnamaker.ai. And this allows you to make intelligent chatbots very, very easily. I really like it. If you look at the graphic, which they're showing the animation on the right, there's a few ideas there for your own chatbots. You could be putting in here basic company details so people know about your menus, your opening hours, etc really good. But for today, what we're going to do is look at how we can create a SharePoint FAQ so that if users are in SharePoint and they have a question how to check in a document, for example, they'll be able to just type in to the bot and receive answers. So I've already logged in. Um, it's fair to say this service is free. It's currently in preview. I will publish a slide with the limitations of the service uh, towards the end of the video. So it's really easy to get started. All we have to do is go create new service. So I would like to call mine SharePoint FAQ Bot. Now it asks me where are the URLs of FAQ pages or manuals which it would like us to crawl. So it's going to look at semi-structured information which you have and turn this into a question and answer. Now I don't actually have some URLs for my content today, but I do have some files, a document in fact. This is what my document looks like. It's just got questions and answers. What is SharePoint? Some text. How do I check in a file? Some text, etc. I tried to cover the basic user questions. So let's select that file. SharePoint FAQ. There we go. I could actually create this from scratch if I didn't have anything documented. That's easy too. I'll show you that in a moment. Create. So there we go. As many dialogues often start with someone saying hi to the chatbot, then it's by default put this in. But you can see here my other questions, it's broken them out because they were titles within my document and it's pulled out the text too. Uh, I could add extra Q&A pairs very easily here. In fact, I am going to do that and I'll tell you why. Let's just add here. So when Microsoft started doing chatbots, first of all, apparently the two most common questions were, tell me a good joke and what's the weather like? So since this is people's first interaction with this technology quite often, you may as well have those bases covered first of all. So you should find some nice jokes, politically correct, you know, uh, which you can also add in here. So here's the question, tell me a joke. Gonna paste that in with the answer. Add a new Q and A pair. Now I'm adding slightly different wording here, but this is not entirely necessary, you know, because when people are asking questions in natural language, Q and A maker is going to be smart enough to have a reasonable stab at what the question means. 
what's the weather like? If I was doing a really clever system, of course, I would be looking at the location of the person. But for this one, let's just give them a generic world weather link. OK, so those are my additions. Let's save and retrain. So that's done. So now we can test. So we begin our conversation by saying hi. The machine is talking to me. What is SharePoint? OK, that corresponds to my answer. Notice, however, over here on the left, you could train the bot by selecting some of the other answers, which it thinks are possible alternatives. So you can train uh, better responses uh, through putting in uh, you know, different questions and seeing which way you think the dialogue should go. So this is really powerful. And I can't resist this. You see, it keeps telling me this one. I mean, we all act like nuts in IT anyway, so maybe I want the magician one instead. There we go. But it looks pretty good to me. The next thing that we can do is publish this. Those are our statistics. Now, you may be surprised about what you see here. It's been very business friendly so far. Many ordinary users could just come in here, train Q&A Maker, and you saw it, it was a working bot. However, all it's given us when we complete is details about how to query the service. So yeah, it's not finished. There's gonna be more work, I'm afraid, to actually embed this in SharePoint. So, recommendation is the business folks can easily maintain the FAQ in Q&A Maker like this, but we're going to need some code to do the actual embedding in nice forms, etc. It's possible to do this with some embed code in web pages. Uh, it's possible to do this by creating Power Apps forms, uh, Xamarin forms even. So, some of this we're going to cover in future videos. OK, some notable points then about Q&A Maker. Do remember that it's still in preview. This means it's subject to change. And however it's licensed now may change when it goes into general availability. For now, however, Q&A Maker is free. The default limit gives you 10,000 transactions per month and 10 calls per minute. However, you can get the premium tier for free. There's a form on the site for you to request that which puts you up to 1,000 per minute and 500,000 transactions per month. The knowledge base size is 20 megabytes, which actually sounds like a lot of text to me. This has been primarily tested in English, but you can upload Q&A uh, with any language. But if you are using multilingual channels, create a separate service per language for best results. If you enjoyed today's video, then please subscribe to my channel. And if you think that I could help you with your project, then reach out to the email address shown.